Let's dive right in. This is the walkthrough for the free asset of phospholipid bilayers, and we're gonna run through some of the features. We'll start by just zooming out, and you can see there's a number of pairs of phospholipids here, and then the individual phospholipids. So we'll start by hiding the bilayers collection up top, hitting seven for top view, and simply moving over here. So you can see I've designed five different styles of phospholipids. All of these have the same set of modifiers applied, which is a subdivision surface, just to make it a little bit smoother to run. None of these are actually enabled in the viewport. For some of them, if you want to enable them to see what the final product is going to look like, that might be advisable. But for smooth operation, they are all disabled by default. You can see there are individual styles, both straight and curved for each one. And if you want to manipulate any of them or have a additional set of phospholipids, you can do that pretty simply. So I'm going to simply go ahead and grab this one, tab into edit mode, and you can see if I hit Z and come into wireframe, then I can grab any of these rings, hit G to move this around and simply shape the phospholipid however I want. And you can do that for any number of these. For the individual phospholipids, they're all just set up as such, sort of to put them on display, but it's actually the bilayers that I'm using in the, or rather it's the pairs of phospholipids that I'm using in the default bilayers. So if we hit Z and come to solid view again, you can see each of these is essentially one of these phospholipids paired across a mirror, so they are essentially identical. Again, if you wanted to change these, you could simply tab into edit mode and then move them around so that they don't look exactly symmetric, which might be advisable. In terms of actually setting up the phospholipid bilayers, which are over in the center of the scene right here, we'll re-enable the bilayer collection. And of course, you can hide the individual phospholipids or the phospholipid pairs at any time by simply hiding these. You do want to have the actual collection visible in the viewport though for renders, so that when you go ahead and try and render the plane and collection, you will be able to see it. Now, there are three bilayer settings available. There's high density, low density, and medium density. You can see that by default, I have the high density one visible in the renders, but if I change which one is visible, you're just getting a relative density. All of these are made on a plane, that is the same size. So we'll run through some of the features of the plane. I'm going to grab the high density bilayer. You can see I've got a slight displacement here just to add a little bit of variation to the surface. And then there is a particle system that is governing actually the placement of all the phospholipids. So let's go look at the particle system. I'm going to come to that tab. And you can see I've just have this very simple hair particle system. The exact number of vertices here matches the number of vertices in this plane. The advanced and rotation features are enabled so that you can rotate the phospholipids relative to one another, and you can randomize the phase. I haven't done it for any of these by default, but it's very easy to change all of these. So you can see I have the curved style four phospholipid selected for this. If I wanted to change, I would simply hit X and then choose the phospholipid that I wanted to use. If you wanted to use multiple phospholipids, you can also do that. I personally recommend duplicating ones of the same style, changing them up a little bit, and then putting them into one collection and using them as a collection. You can then also use count features in 2.9 onwards, but I'm not gonna give a rundown of that here today. Essentially, this is the main point of it, but there is one nice little extra feature, which is that I created this plane so that it has a vertex group by default. So if you wanted to put something like a membrane protein or just a disruption in the plane in the middle, you can do that. And I'll show that very quickly here. So I'm going to shift A, add in a cylinder, I'll scale this up just a little bit and then shift and click the high density bilayer plane, control minus, and now you see that it doesn't look like anything's happened. Coincidentally, you need the bool tools add-on enabled to make this work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the high density plane. You can see I now have a difference Boolean using that cylinder. And I'm actually going to move that above the particle system. And now what's happened is the particle system has observed that there is an object in there and it has moved everything out of the way. So if you want to have a hole in the plane, you could put a protein in here or something like that, which is actually going to be the subject of the next video, how to add membrane proteins very quickly to phospholipid bilayers, then you could do that. So the reason I'm releasing this assay right now is that hopefully it'll make it easier for people to follow along with that video or to create their own phospholipid bilayers as they see fit. So we're going to simply remove that cutter for now and delete this collection. The last thing that I want to mention is actually related to the particle system, and then we're gonna briefly touch on the materials. So one thing worth noting is that show emitter is hidden, which means that you cannot actually see the plane in the final render. So right now it is selected and you can barely see the outline of it, but it is actually not showing up. It is also disabled in the viewport. So if I were to come down to viewport display and show it, now you can see the plane in between, 
but it is hidden and it's also hidden in the render so it will not appear. You will simply get this nice little fossil filled goodbye layer. The last thing that I want to touch on is just the way that I've customized the materials. Generally for the assets, I like to leave the materials up to the individual to customize, but I've provided two by default. Now the materials are actually applied to the phospholipids, not to the bilayer itself, which is the way it has to be for particle systems. So we'll grab a phospholipid here. We'll come down and you see we have two materials in the dedicated slots. There is a base material and a random color material. And I'll briefly run through how those work. So I'll hit Z, come to rendered view. And you can see we've got a good mix of colors. Essentially, the way that I've set this up to work is if we open a new window, come to the shader editor, this is the random color material. And you can see it just has object info for the particle in question. This would be the phospholipid. So wherever it's placed, it's going to get a random input. It's going to go into a color ramp and you can kind of set these as a range from whatever you'd like. So you can see as I move this pink, it becomes more pink. If I move this one, it changes color a bit there. I have also set it up so that you can control the whole thing. It's got a little bit of subsurface for work with cycles if you're so inclined to do that, and it's just offsetting the subsurface value a bit, but you can change the whole set of hues by simply scrolling through here. So instead of having to change each of them in the color ramp, you can just do it through here by default 0.5. Now the other option for all of the materials is much simpler, and it is just the base color material. You can see it's got this sort of orange color with a pink subsurf. That is available if you want. It's not currently applied to the particle in this specific case, so we're not seeing an update there. This is the one that I think is a little bit more generally useful for scenes, and you can make these colors a little bit less different from one another if you'd like more of a subtle effect. Obviously, you can also bring down the saturation and have it be less pronounced. All of those are available options. That just about rounds it up. This is a free asset. It's available on Gumroad. I'll put a link in the description and you can use it to create any variety of phospholipid bilayers. If you're interested in how to create these in a little bit more of a customized way, I do have a previous video on my channel and I'll put a link to that as well. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, pointing others towards these free assets. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.